We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and as usual, we're glad to bring you the things that uh, the Lord have laid on our hearts to share with you today. Amen. Amen. And of course, I'm um, happy to be able to be here with you this morning. Um, it's always an honor um, for me to um, participate in the um, daily devotion. Um, throughout the week, I, I hadn't had many opportunities to, but um, it's always a blessing, um, not only just to be a part, just to hear what the Lord has to say, and um, and I'm looking forward to that again this morning. Amen, amen. So this morning, we uh, just want to talk a little bit about marriage and, um, and things like that, and you know, I've found out over the years um, that how important it is for people to guard their marriage and of course part of guarding their marriage is guarding their mouth and what they say concerning their marriage and concerning their spouse and so many times I think what takes place is before people get married they have confidence that um, that they confide in and um, you know, they've gone through different things, maybe even in different relationships. And of course, you know, when you've gone through different relationships, most people don't want to go through it alone, especially women. Now, men is, is a little bit different. Most of the time, men aren't going to talk about what's going on in their relationship or in their marriage. But women feel more comfortable opening, opening up themselves, you know, to, to other people about it. And so what happens is when a person gets married, now before they get married or before they're in a marriage or covenant, they will um, open themselves up about different things to their friends or family, whatever the case may be, uh, con you know, concerning um, different issues in life, different problems that they may be going through. But uh, sometimes they never think to when after they get married to guard their marriage against outside interference you know and and what we're specifically talking about is against words you know and I mean bad words and and guarding it in that mind in that mindset especially um, if somebody someone haven't been taught the concept of speaking life to a situation or sp the importance of words then you know they can they can think that they can kind of toss around uh, different things like like they've done in the past, or they can think that it's okay to toss around words, you know, and those words have no effect. But as we read the other day in the eleventh chapter of the book of Mark, we will have what we say is what the Lord said, you know. We will have what we say, and that's both good and bad, you know, bad unfortunately we will have what we say you know regardless and so what happens is we we get to we get to toying around with it and treat the marriage the same way we treat any other situation um, by speaking different things you know and we have to be careful what we say and not only that if we're not careful we'll bring our marital situations to other people and and a lot of times they're only getting one side of it, you know, and things like that. And then they will begin to speak against it, you know. And um, with that, you know, now you got all kind of demons you have to come against because of it. Or you see the effects of it. And a lot of people, unfortunately, don't know what in the world is going on, you know. Right. Amen. And I think it speaks to um, the importance of us knowing the word of God so that we can know what to speak. Um, concerning our lives so that we're not number one speaking against the word or um, speaking things into existence that you know may not have even been there to begin with and then like you said the added factor of if you talk to other people and you're planting bad seed about your own life to other people then it's that much more of a force concerning words or negative words that are going out things that are going out against the will of God against your marriage, against your life, uh, against your 
the atmosphere in your home, the atmosphere in your relationship is that much more that we have to fight against once we do that. And so um, the best thing first and foremost is to um, always take things to the Lord in prayer and be led by the Holy Spirit when we're speaking. Because the, the, the word makes it clear that we're going to give an account for you know every word that we speak. And so we have to be careful anyway because we're going to have to answer for the words that we speak. And so, um, you know, the best thing is that if we're led by the Holy Spirit, even when it comes time to sharing things, because, you know, of course we share different things that we may experience or testimonies, but even in that, you know, are you sharing it just because you want to vent or are you sharing it because you know that it's going to encourage somebody and be a blessing to them and point them to Christ, mm -hmm. you know? And so we have to um, really weigh um, what it is we say when we say it and the one way we can do that and know that we're not going to go wrong is to be led by the Holy Spirit before we speak and if not just to be quiet about mm -hmm. it. And as I'm glad you said that, that the, use the word vent. When we think about a vent like an air duct or air vent, it's an outlet for heat or whatever you know is at the source of it. Usually it's the heater or the AC unit or whatever the case may be. And so all of that, you release all of that, you know, when you open up a vent, in other words, into the atmosphere, when you open up a vent. And a lot of times, and, and I'm glad you used that word because a lot of times that's what's going on. For whatever reason, you have tried to bring your situation to your spouse or how you feel about something and they don't receive it. You know, or maybe you think they don't receive it because a lot of times if you really thought that they've received it, that's where it would stop. But once they don't receive it or you perceive that they haven't received it, now you feel like, OK, now I got to go to my girlfriends or now I got to go to my friends or whatever the case may be. And I just got to tell somebody I got to get this out. And then sometimes people don't even bring the situation or how they feel to their spouse. Their spouse is clueless, you know, and so they'll tell the friend and then they'll vent about it and a lot of times when, when you are venting to your friends or whatever the case may be you know you're there you are bringing them in on a situation you are inviting them to a situation that they should not a lot of times be invited to unless you know they have godly counsel and uh, and things like that but most of the time when people bring their problems to someone it's not because they're seeking godly counsel. You know, we use the term, I, guess I just had to get this off of my chest, and now I feel so much better. The only problem is, if you're telling everybody else, how is that fixing your marriage? You see that? And so, or any other situation for that matter, you know. In fact, I want to go read something real quick in the book of Matthew. So let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the 18th chapter of the book of Matthew. We're just going to read a, a scripture or two here. Uh, that, I, that I think is a good, good practice uh, for the marriage. The 18th chapter of the book of Matthew. And let's read verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. You see that? So look at what it says there. If thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Now, I think that's, that's of course, it's talking about generally talking about a brother is generally talking about you know how to take care of something in the church but I think that is also a good concept when you're talking about things between in your marriage now generally people in church you don't have to live with them you don't have to see them every day and so you can pretty much get along with people but when you're talking about a marriage sure enough you know you need to guard it 
Uh, you need to be careful who you invite into it. You see, because once you, it's like once you, in, you think about it, I think about it like this. Over the years, I've seen, you know, on the news about parties and it seemed, you know, being broken up and it seemed like the party was going good until one bad element showed up. And all it takes is one bad person to come to that party and don't like the way somebody looked at them or see somebody that they don't like to begin with and it's just a fight break out and it ruins the party for everybody else. And you know, and that's, that's the way it is in marriage as well. You know, you have to think about also what you're doing when you're talking about inviting people into your marriage, you know, and you're speaking something about your spouse to another person. Don't you know that you are changing the opinion? If you're not careful, you can be changing the opinion of that other person towards your spouse. So even if you and your spouse get things worked out, every time your family member or friend or whoever you vented to see your spouse, they're going to think about what you've told them about that spouse. And so even when the situation is calm between you all and you all have worked it out, you've still invited somebody else to that party and some negative energy there. So now what generally happens is that you, you'll feel a vibe from another person, from that person that you've invited there, and now you feel like you have to defend against, you know, what you've said, or, or either you feel like there's a separation between you and that other person because of, well, wait a minute, you told me all this about them, but you're still with them, you know, and so it's just best not to invite people or do like you said, you know, make sure that you are prayerful about what you speak and who you speak it to concerning your marriage. Amen. Amen. That's a <laughs> and I'm telling you, uh, that's one of those things I think that would help a marriage out, you know, these different marriages out because you already got a war, you already have um, issues that you have to deal with, and I, I've found that the more people you invite in with those issues, and I'm gonna tell you something, spiritually what's taking place is not only are you inviting other people into your marriage, you know, and their opinions about your marriage, but a lot of times their opinions and the words that they speak is based off of their own past. It's not based off of how you feel about your spouse because, you know, you, you for the most part, may still love your spouse. You may still have feelings for your spouse. And so you're inviting people in that may not be offering their opinions or godly counsel based on your standpoint and, the sh and wearing your shoes. You're inviting somebody in you know, a lot of times when, uh, especially sometimes when women will, um, you know, vent about their spouse to some other woman, it's usually a woman that can't stand men to begin with or done had bad relationships. And so they got all kind of good advice to offer, you know. <laughs> and then you think about, then the jealousy factor is in there because in I'm telling you, you will hear something like, you know, I knew he wasn't any good anyway. I knew you shouldn't have married him. And see, so in that whole time, you're thinking, well, wait a minute, you probably felt like this from the get-go, but why if you didn't even know them? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, jealousy will come into play. You know, all of those things come into play. You are inviting other spirits in that really originally had nothing to do with your marriage. Mm -hmm. But now that you've invited it in, you know, now you got some stuff to deal with. Amen. And another point that I was going to uh, bring out, in, um, I think it's over in Matthew chapter 12 where it says, you know, that every idle word that men shall speak, we shall give an account of it. On the other side of that, when we're inviting um, people into situations, relationships, marriage, whatever the issues are, we put them in a position 
to have to give an account for the things that they're speaking mm -hmm. that are not beneficial and we put them in a position to possibly be walking in offense mm -hmm. concerning that situation that's right and so we don't want we have to be careful that we're not putting people in those positions you know because of our emotional state at the time mm -hmm. you know again if we rely on the holy spirit to lead us he's not going to lead us um to pull people into strife or contention or you know put them in a place where they're going to be offended at a situation where it's like you said we may get over it we mm. may find it in our hearts to forgive and then they're still walking in offense you know toward that spouse or toward whomever you may have vented about amen amen and and that's a dangerous thing so why set another person up like that mm -hmm. is you know you got enough problems dealing with your own offense about it or dealing with your own hurt and all and unforgiveness or you know bitterness or whatever may come from the situation and so why put another person in that situation you know i've said you've heard me say before if there are going to be some people in hell but who were unable to forgive people who they've never met before never had any dealings with before or don't even know personally. You don't, you know, the Bible don't say that, you know, as long as, as long as it's the person that you know or you were the one that were, you know, done wrong. If you walk in unforgiveness, there's no way you're going to heaven. And now that's to folks that you know personally and to people that you don't know personally. And then when you think about it, nine times out of ten, the things that people are venting about is just from their standpoint. And then you, you have to think about maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm seeing this situation in a wrong light. You see that? And most of the times, people's friends are going to sympathize with them. Very few friends are able to remove their feelings from the situation that they have for their friend who's venting to them. Because a lot of times people feel like if I'm your friend, that means I have to take up, I have to go to bat for you instead of when I see you're walking the wrong path. I'm going to stand up to you and tell you, hey, that's the wrong thing. Come out of that. You see that? And so a lot of times we put our friends or pe people that we've been to, and I'm, I'm going to go as far as to say this. A lot of times the things that the people that uh, the other spouse is venting to it may not even be a real friend. It may just be somebody that's got an ear. Because, you know, I've, I've seen that too where you vented to people for so long until they get tired of it. And every time you call, they're not answering their phone because they don't want to hear you complaining about what they wish they had. <laughs> or they don't want you dropping all that negative energy into their spirit because they're smart enough to understand if I listen to you vent about your husband or your wife, then that's going to poison my, you know, my situation. And so that, and that's another thing. If that other person is married, if that friend that you're venting to, venting to is married, you know, you can be planting doubt into their spirit to now, you know, where they may see the same thing or think they see the same thing in their spouse, and now they begin questioning that. You see that? And so that's why I think it's important. Let's, let's, in fact, let's go read that in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew and the 33rd verse. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. So in other words, what Jesus is saying basically in a nutshell is let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. If you love your husband, then love that husband. If you love your wife, then love that wife. Don't nitpick and, 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 and you know, I guess try to weigh the good with the bad. When you love somebody, it doesn't mean that you don't see the faults there, but you either need to make that tree good or make it bad. In other words, if you got so much complaining to do, then maybe you don't need to be with them. Now, if you plan on staying with them, keep your mouth shut and pray to God. Talk to God about it. In other words, what's the use in complaining about somebody who you've been married for 20 years, married to for 20 years, and who you plan on never divorcing? Either make that tree good or make it bad. Don't stay there, you know, 
complaining about it. Your comp what? So let me ask you this. What have your complaining done for it? Nothing. Not one thing. You need to, marriage is work, and you need to work on it. Talking about it ain't going to do anything. Talking bad about it, I should say that way. You know, <clears throat> especially when we think about the faith concept of you will have what you say. Whatever you speak, that's what you'll have. And many times people can't get past that threshold of what they think is bad because of what they're speaking. And I'm going to tell you, half of the time it's, the, it's you, the one that's venting. You're the problem. You got in your mind how things should be. And because they're not that way, you're venting about it. You see that? And so I, I tell you, all it takes is for you to look, you know, sometimes think and consider what other people have gone through. And I think part of the problem is because people don't want to suffer, you know. And so just think about what other people have gone through. It's folks out there that's gone through a whole lot worse than what, you're, what you've gone through or what you think you're going through. So while it may not be perfect in your eyes, maybe you need to redefine what perfect perfection is. Maybe you're the one that's the problem. You see that? And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I can, and you may have heard me say this before, I have learned the more that you complain about certain something, the worse it feels. You're just making yourself miserable when you complain. The Bible tells us to do all things without murmuring. All things, that includes being married. Quit murmuring if you're married. And I'm telling you because we can murmur and before we know it, in our spirit, you know, that is poison and is leaving bitterness. The more we speak negative about it, the more bitter we become about it. Amen. Amen. There was one other point that I wanted to bring out concerning um, bitterness, um, unforgiveness, or um, offense. Because we know, and I, and I guess this is uh, what the world deem as Black History Month, so you have a lot of um, light being cast on, you know, different accomplishments of, you know, um, the blacks and African Americans, but um, some sometimes people because you talk about being offended at somebody that you don't know, mm -hmm. and when you look at the history of injustices that take place, if you're not careful, you can move into the area of being offended toward people of the past or bring that over into people of other races, even without knowing them, and so. It's one thing to know your history, but it's something different to take on that spirit of offense or even have unforgiveness in your heart because of something that was done to other people. And sometimes, um, you know, if you're not careful and you're not led by the Holy Spirit, the enemy can justify that in your mind that you have a right to be angry or offended or walk in unforgiveness towards somebody because, because of an injustice. But we still have to go back to the Word because the Word tells us how to... Um, deal with those who we think are our enemies or those who we think hate us or those who we think misuse us or, de you know, despitefully misuse us or mistreat us. The Word tells us how to deal with those situations, and it's not with unforgiveness. It's not with bitterness. You know, it's not with hatred. We're not supposed to return that. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful, you know, when you're talking about, cause when you're talking about being offended or having unforgiveness towards somebody that you don't know, in situations like that, or even seeing injustices on TV, you know, for, from today, you can be bitter and offended toward somebody who's doing somebody else wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful to guard our heart, not to allow that to set in and, again, be led by the Holy Spirit in our responses. And we're gonna, if we respond with the word, then we don't have to worry about taking on those situations that deal with other people that we don't even know mm -hmm. and allowing offense and bitterness to set in our heart. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something, especially in marriage, when you've talked so much about it, uh, against it, and murmured and complained about it, b when bitterness begins to set in, because it's going to set in, the more you murmur, the more you complain, then it taints your view of what the reality is. Yeah. It will taint your view of what the reality is, and so that, and that's one reason why we have to be careful with that, you know, that so that we don't allow our view. There's no such thing as that person is bad, and I can hold bitterness in my heart, and I'm still clean. 
no such thing. And so we have to be careful with that. Let's go ahead and keep reading at, at uh, verse 34. Okay. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now that right there should tell us something there. What are we speaking against our marriage? And if it's if we really feel that way, is it, you know, according to the Lord, it's from our heart. Mm -hmm. And so for us to be able to speak evil against our marriage, something that we have made vows before God concerning, then that means that there has to be something on the inside of us. You ever stop and think if if God uses marriage to if God uses marriage uh, to help us to grow, that maybe He has that spouse the way that that spouse is to help you to grow. And if that's the case, why are you speaking against what God have ordained? If that make any sense, it don't mean that we won't have to give an account for our decisions and things like that. But it just means if that's part of God's process then why speak against the process? Why not ask the Lord, Lord, what am I supposed to learn out of this situation? And so we have to be Amen. careful even with those things. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and keep it in. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You see, and so... I think it's important. Now, when, again, when we see things that need to be addressed, let's address them. But we saw, according to the word of God, how we're supposed to address them. We go and tell our spouse alone what it is that need to be addressed. We go and tell them that alone. You see that? And then from there, if they don't hear it, then we can pray to God. And God will send us some kind of godly counsel. And a lot of times it's not your friend that you grew up with that understand you that, you know, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's go ahead and keep reading. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, what does that word idle mean? It means unfruitful or unproductive. So you murmuring and complaining, even maybe you have gone to your spouse. Maybe you have tried to work it out and maybe it didn't get anywhere as far as in your mind. Because a lot of times what happens is you can speak a word. Now, according to the Bible, the words are seeds. And so you can speak a word. And just because you don't see that seed growing. After you've planted it in your spouse, you can complain about it. But that don't mean that it's not growing. That don't mean that it hadn't taken root. It, that don't even mean that your spouse don't understand and see what they're saying. Sometimes. People just need to come up to that point. But because they're not getting that fast enough for you, you're going to complain about it. And so if you're not careful, every word that you speak after that is idle, unfruitful. It's just you murmuring and complaining. According to the word of God, we're going to give an account of it on the day of judgment. Let's go ahead and keep reading. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. By your words you'll be condemned. And, and, and not only that, so condemnation how? Seconds. Condemnation how? When it comes to, to marriage, condemnation also uh, to a situation. Condemnation to a marriage. You can condemn your marriage by the words that you speak. And, of course, that's not God's will. Amen. Amen. All right, so we want to just encourage you all to speak life. To your marriage don't allow the situation to get you down so to the point where where you just can't get over it or whatever the case may be learn to speak life to your marriage and allow God because it's really all about trusting God trust God to fix what you've taken to him in prayer amen and quit thinking that other people go answer your prayer you know and can fix it amen we want to say thank you all for joining us today my prayers that something that have, have been said that have been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to listen to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.